Welcome back everyone. This is going to be our hands-on demonstration on demonstrating how to connect virtual networks using network pairing. In this demonstration, we will be using Azure Playgrounds, so I do encourage you to follow along. With that said, we will once again provide a script to build out your environment, which we will cover here right now. We are going to start off with three individual virtual networks named Cake Hub VNet, Cake Spoke 1 VNet, and Cake Spoke 2 VNet, each of which will have a single subnet and a single virtual machine inside of that subnet. Once our environment is built out, we will then go through the process of connecting each of these virtual networks over a network peering connection. For this example, we are going to adopt a hub and spoke topology in which our Cake Hub VNet virtual network will be the hub of our topology and our Spoke 1 and Spoke 2 VNets will, not surprisingly, be our spokes. We will then demonstrate creating our peering connections in each direction, although again, by default, assuming you have control over both virtual networks, if you're using the portal at least, both directional peerings are completed in the same step. Technically, it is two separate steps, however, Azure is nice enough to combine them for you. And also in this demonstration, we are going to create one of our peering connections using the portal. However, we will connect the second one using PowerShell, taking special note of some of the options in those PowerShell commands. And then once we are done with our peerings, we are then going to view the effective routes for the virtual machines in our peering setup, looking at both the machines in our hub virtual network and our spoke virtual network, and we'll take a look at the differences between the two of them. With that, let's jump over to our Azure environment and get started. Okay, now that we are in our Azure environment, let's take a quick look at the resources we have already deployed. I have already run my setup script in my environment, and then we'll go through the process of creating our first peering connection. First thing we'll take a look at is our virtual networks. We'll go to our search bar up top, and then type in virtual networks. And we can see we have our three VNets called Cake Hub VNet, Cake Spoke 1 VNet, and Cake Spoke 2 VNet. Let's next take a quick look at the virtual machines we have set up. We'll just type in virtual machines in our search field. And in here we have our hub virtual machine called hub NVA VM pretending to be a virtual appliance. And we have spoke one VM and spoke two VM. We are going to use these virtual machines to check our effective routes once we are done. So with that, let's now move on and go ahead and create our first peering connection for the first one, we're going to use the portal, in which case we are going to connect our hub network with our spoke one virtual network. To create a peering connection, we'll go back to our virtual network menu, which is where the peering connection will be created. I'll go back to our search field, click back on virtual networks. And let's go ahead and create our first peering connection from our hub VNet to our spoke one VNet. We'll click on hub VNet. I'll go ahead and collapse this left blade. And then in our Cake Hub VNet options, in our left menu underneath settings, we will go down to peerings and then click on that. And then from here, we will add a new peering. And here is where we will fill out our information. Notice up top, we get an informational bulletin that for peering to work, two peering links must be created. Also notice that when we select remote virtual network, in other words, peering with a network we control, Azure will create both peering links in both directions at the same time as we mentioned a little bit earlier. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and give this peering link from our hub VNet to our spoke one VNet appearing name. We'll just give it a simple name of hub dash spoke. And then we'll go ahead and review our other options. We need to choose whether to allow traffic to the remote virtual network, in this case, our spoke network, and to also allow traffic forwarded from our remote network to go back to our hub network. And the default is to allow traffic both ways, which is what we are going to stick with. Our other option is relevant if we have a virtual network gateway attached to one of our networks, which we see here, in which case, if this network was hosting a virtual network gateway, we could choose to allow use of this virtual network gateway to be used by our remote networks, shown by the top grayed out option of uses virtual networks gateway or route server, or if this was a remote network and it was wanting to use the peered networks network gateway, we would then use the option of use the remote virtual networks gateway or route server. Of course, once we select it, we get a big red box because there is no network gateway deployed, so there is no option to use and we will go back to none. Scrolling on further down, we also have the option to create the peering connection in the opposite direction, again, all within the same step. This is going to be the peering link from our spoke network back to our hub network. 
in which case we'll go ahead and give it a name of spoke one to hub. We are going to use resource manager. And of course we need to choose a subscription and virtual network that we are peering back and forth from within the same step. In this case, the virtual network that we are going to peer to and from is going to be our cake spoke one VNet. And then our last step is to configure all the same options as above. That will be for the spoke to hub connection in which case we're going to allow traffic both to and from the peer network, and we are not going to utilize a virtual network gateway because there is currently not one deployed. With that, that will be all the steps necessary to create the bi-directional peering between the hub and the spoke network and vice versa. I'll go ahead and click on add. Now this will take about a moment to complete. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and come back once our peering connection is up and running. Okay, after about 30 seconds or so of waiting, we can see that the peering status of our Cake Hub VNet to our Spoke 1 VNet, of which our peering name was called Hub Spoke, has been changed from updated to connected, which means that the connection from the Hub network to the Spoke 1 network is now completed. Let's now go ahead and check the peering from the Spoke 1 network over to the Hub to see if it completes the process. Easiest way to do so is go to our Virtual Networks menu, Click on Cake Spoke 1 VNet, which is where that peering connection exists. Once again, go to Settings, and then click on Peerings. And from here, we can see that second peering that was created in reverse called Spoke 1 to Hub, of which our peered network is the Cake Hub VNet Virtual Network. So very good. We have completed a bi-directional peering using the Azure portal from our Hub network to our Spoke 1 VNet and vice versa. We're halfway there. Next, let's move on to completing the peering connection from our hub network to our Spoke2 network, except this time we're going to use PowerShell to demonstrate, specifically using Cloud Shell. To get this set up, I'm going to go ahead and open up Cloud Shell in our top right, and it will come up here in just a moment. Looks like it's already up. Let me go ahead and clear my screen. And so we can see what we are working with, I'm going to go ahead and maximize my PowerShell window. Now, for this part of the demonstration, instead of having you watch me hand type out PowerShell commands, I'm actually going to show you a separate PowerShell script file that I'm going to copy and paste in, and we will go through what those PowerShell commands will accomplish before we simply copy and paste them over. I'm going to go ahead and go over to a separate window with a PowerShell script, which I am again going to essentially copy and paste in. And what's going to happen is after assigning variables to our hub VNet and our spoke to VNet, we are then going to create the network peerings from our hub network to the Spoke2 network, and then also create a separate peering from our Spoke2 network back to our hub network. Now, we're not going to get super deep other than pointing out a couple relevant points of these commands, but how it's going to work is that the PowerShell command is add az virtual network peering. We'll go ahead and give the peering a name, in this case, hub to Spoke2, from which we need to designate what network we are peering from, in this case, our hub VNet, and also the remote network we are peering to, in this case, the variable assigned to our Spoke2 VNet. Two other options I wanted to point out is we are also allowing forwarding traffic, that is allowing traffic to and from our networks to flow back and forth. And even though we did not have a network gateway set up, I did want to include in the option in PowerShell format to both allow a host virtual network gateway and to allow use of a remote virtual network gateway that you may need to know. If our hub network had a VPN gateway set up and we want to share that VPN connection with our Spoke2 VNet, we would also need to include in the option of allow gateway transit for the hosting network to share that connection. In the same manner for our Spoke2 network, which would be sharing the VPN connection hosted in our hub network, instead of allow gateway transit, we would instead need to use the option of use remote gateway because we are essentially using the VPN gateway hosted in the remote network that we are peering to. Now in its current form, and we have in the notes here that if we run these commands as is, it will fail because this use remote gateway option will not work if the peer network doesn't actually have a VPN gateway up and running. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that last option off, but I'm gonna leave it here for demonstration purposes. And for your own reference, we are going to include this PowerShell script file in the lesson resources in case you want to take a look at it as well. With that in mind, I'm going to copy all of these PowerShell commands except the last use remote gateway option, which again will not work. And I'm going to simply copy and paste it into our PowerShell Cloud Shell window so we can go ahead and create that second peering connection. After we copied, let's go back to our PowerShell. 
and just simply paste into there, and that will complete here in about a minute or so. Okay, after about 30 seconds or so of waiting for our PowerShell commands to run, let's go ahead and go back to our portal and see if this new peering connections were successful. We'll go ahead and minimize our Cloud Shell. And from our Virtual Networks menu, let's go back to our Cake Hub VNet on the left side. Go back to Peerings, which is already there. And we now have two separate peerings. We have our Hub to Spoke to Cake Spoke 1 VNet. And we have the one that we just created in PowerShell called Hub to Spoke 2, which is connected to our Cake Spoke 2 VNet. Also notice that Gateway Transit is enabled to our Cake Spoke 2 VNet, even though once again, we don't actually have a virtual network gateway currently set up. However, we were able to enable that option. Let's now go ahead and check the same thing with our Cake Spoke 2 VNet, see if that peering was successful. And looks like it was. We have Spoke 2 to Hub for the peering name. It is peer to the Cake Hub VNet virtual network. And we also have Gateway Transit disabled because there was no gateway to transit in this case. So very good, we were able to successfully complete the second half of our peering setup, this time in PowerShell. Last thing I wanna do before we close out is to check the effective routes that were automatically added to our virtual machines after our peerings were completed. Let's go ahead and check that now. To do so, we could browse to our virtual machines, or if we wanna have one last step, let's simply go to our network interfaces menu, which is where we actually have to check our effective routes. To do so, we'll go ahead and type in network interface from our top menu. Let's go ahead and first check our hub network virtual appliance by going and clicking on the network interface for it. And if we go down to our bottom and then click on effective routes, this will show all of the routes added to our virtual machine, which will come up here in about 10 seconds. Okay, and after about 10 seconds, we now have two new routes added of which the next hop type is called VNet peering. And these are default routes automatically added for us. We had no control over those. And the address prefix, in other words, the where am I going, correlate with the address ranges of our Spoke 1 and our Spoke 2 virtual networks, shown by the 10.100 and 10.200 slash 16 address prefixes. This is showing us that our hub virtual machine is able to effectively communicate with both Spoke 1 and Spoke 2 networks. Let's go ahead and check the same thing with our Spoke 1 NIC. And it brings us right back into effective routes that'll come up here in just a moment. And now that it is up, we have a single VNet peering default route added only to our hub VNet. Notice that we do not have any routes to our spoke to virtual network through our hub VNet because once again, virtual network peering is not transitive. Spoke one is unable to talk to spoke two at all through our hub network. And to round things out, let's go ahead and check the effective routes of our spoke to VM NIC. And now that that is up, we have our default route once again pointing to our hub VNet, which is the 10.0.0.0 slash 16 address prefix. And once again, Spoke 2 is currently unable to communicate with Spoke 1. With that, that will conclude our demonstration of working with network peering using both the portal and PowerShell. Let's go ahead and review our key takeaways before we move on. Ramping up our demonstration on working with network peering on Azure, we demonstrated the process of creating peering connection between individual virtual networks, from which we were able to see that peering is a bi-directional process, although once again, when using the portal, it completes both steps at the same time. And we also showed what it looks like creating a peering connection using both the Azure portal and also using PowerShell, from which we were able to view effective routes, in which we noticed that our hub virtual network had a default route created to both of our spoke virtual networks. However, each of our spoke virtual networks only had a single peering route to only that hub virtual network and not the spoke network as well. That's going to go ahead and wrap up this lesson. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one.